uncluttered primitive style. Can it be done? Well, today we're going to do it in my living room. So stay tuned. <laughs> it's not that there was anything wrong with my living room before. And the other day on my live video, I mentioned that I wanted to redo my living room for spring. <laughs> and I think it was Jeet out there that said, what, you just did your cozy winter. And it's true. And it is really too early to decorate for spring, especially here in New England. Because the truth is, we still have snow outside. And we'll probably get a whole lot more before the end of the season. But our house is under construction. By that, I mean we had a leak in the tavern, which is the center of the house, and it's been dirty and gross, and my husband hasn't been able to do the plumbing. It's just been a disaster because the pipes were all stuck together because they're 100 years old. And these are the fun things in an old farmhouse. After all, this old farmhouse is like almost 250 years old. So that has made me feel like my living room's just this cluttered, disastrous mess. And I've been feeling really unsettled and I just haven't been able to deal with it. The best way for me to deal with this disaster is to get some control over my environment in which I'm living. And the clutter had to go. But I didn't want to take away from the beauty of the room because I really liked what I did in it. It was looking really good. It's just that there was just too much stuff around. And then when you start adding your own little bits of glasses and napkins and tissues and other things to the mix and iPads and computers, you end up with this cluttered mess and I couldn't stand it anymore. So I decided that simplicity had to rule the day in this room and now it does. You can see the very first thing I did was rearrange the furniture. Well, that's not really true. The first thing I did was clean because man, does a wood stove make a lot of dirt. And I took the rug right off the floor so that we could show the simplicity of the wood. I think it looks really good, guys. I decided to just take out a couple chairs, the rug, um, all of the tchotchkes and start over again. And so what I did in this room was use pretty much my favorite things. And every single item in this room has to matter for something. So it's either doing dual duty or it's got enough mass and scale and interest that it stands alone in the room. Because this is the trick. When you try to start going a little bit more minimal, you want everything to be striking and everything to count. So I didn't take away all the personality. I didn't take away all those things that really matter to me, but I minimalized things that were going on there because the truth is I didn't need all the excess clutter. You can see I cleaned that area up and took out what I had in that area and just put those bins back in there. Everything is simple and plain. And this way you can look at the architecture on the doors you notice the curtains, you notice every single detail. Because to me, every single piece of furniture, every lamp, every lantern, every tree is a piece of art. This Amish rocking chair always commands a lot of attention. It's beautiful. This door, I love this door with the crooked simplicity of it. It's beautiful. So old, so unique, so real. And then check out what I did on the mantle. I stripped it down and then I started adding things that were just rustic and primitive. Not a whole lot. Everything is monochromatic. 
and it goes really nicely over that nice burning fireplace my extra piece of cozy to this room so is this room cozy you bet ask the puppies this room is cozy and beautiful but now there's a lot of space to rest your eyes in to breathe to not feel like you're being taken over by stuff everything is deliberate it all has its place and you just really want to cozy up in there on my sofa I threw one of those woven blankets on there just to break up all the plaid, bring a little more light to the area, bring a little more interest with the diversity of patterns, and yet staying in the same color tones. And I brought in those black pillows just to give it another oomph. So what you want when you're going simple primitive is you want every piece to count and you want that contrast the contrasting elements to give you the dark and the light the wood for warmth and the dark and the light for contrast so i really stuck to black tan and wood and that was it a little bit of brown a little bit of burnt rust and kept it in earth tones and just uncluttered so everything has to be clean it really is kind of a spring cleaning without bringing the spring life into it and in this way i'm ready in a few weeks when i want to come out with the bunnies and the greens everything's going to look really good you can see that i divided this room in half with a sofa and that was a deliberate choice because i wanted that sofa to be right by that fire a really cozy place to sit and read and cuddle and stay super warm and then behind it I put a desk and that's a great place it's a great table to put things on those two chairs that are facing the other direction are actually facing the TV so people can sit there watch some TV and someone else can sit in the other part of the living room with their earphones on and do something else and feel like they're not part of the same room so even though this room should maybe be about five feet longer to do this in a really good way on a small scale this worked and then I brought back in some of the things that I love that make me feel happy and cozy and warm like my pictures and my candles I mean it was working for me and it wasn't bothering me because it was on a shelf if you want to really go minimal you take all that off but I still wanted some of that coziness this is actually a bird feeder that was outside forever and broke and so I'm using it as a lantern and I love it and just kept things minimal with the lanterns the lantern lights the antique pieces the wood and the flowers just to touch a touch of spring and of course my dough bowls so this is very sentimental to me I do not knit this is my sister's knitting she used to knit blankets I don't even know how she had the time but she knitted blankets for all the other teachers who were having babies and her daughter just found this knitting stuff the other day when they were cleaning out and I took it with me even though I don't knit I wanted to display it and think about her and have a piece of her there in my living room and so this just means a lot to me in a heart bowl and I think it looks really great in the room because it reminds you of cold winter days when people are knitting and doing indoor activities especially in the old days and yet it reminds you of spring with the flowers and every single seating area just has its own little sense of charm and simplicity this is an old box that I found in the barn it looks like it's from the Russian bear days and they probably had ham in there at one time for the restaurant and an old crock just reminiscent of the olden days so let's pick this apart just a little bit more we've got a simple table nothing on it but that huge bird cage notice the mass scale and size of that that old chair is probably about 25 years old by now and it doesn't really match the room but it's comfortable it's in perfect shape people want to sit in it so I threw a woven blanket over it to try to make it match just a little next to that chair is this old table that's actually an old door made into an old table I love this 
and I have it set up as a desk or as a display. It's a place you can put your glasses and your things when you're sitting on the chairs watching TV. Now, if you wanna scale that back, you can. You can add books and a lantern, but I felt that that lantern did not have the scale that would be needed for that table. You would need a super big lantern to put in that table. And um, you could put a big light there if you wanted, but I chose then to add more to bring that scale up to size. And so bringing at least the flowers in there help that table feel a little bit more complete. But I like to work in odd numbers and adding that dough bowl, I think added a whole lot more to that table. It just looks better. So yes, is it more cluttered? Yes, but it's very controlled and it can be eliminated if you want to even go more simplistic. Speaking of dough bowls, this one, I decided to just put my bunch of pussy willows in and it adds this touch of hopefulness and spring and softness to the wood of the dough bowl and yet still lets you see all of the cool details of it being scooped out. Truly, this is probably my favorite scene in the room. So simple. It's really three items, the chair, the lantern, and the tree. And yet look where the tree is sitting. It's sitting on my sled, it's in a crock, and the tree is full of hearts to give you that Valentine's Day feeling, but it's all earthy. The wood from the chair is warm and the chair provides a lot of interest as you look at it. And while we're looking at this, I just want you to look over. The rest of that shelf is clean. There is one object on that shelf. There is nothing on the wall, and that gives your eyes a place to rest. Now for the mantle, I could have just put a picture up there and that would have been fine, but I really wanted to use those baskets and I wanted to use that bucket and I thought that it would be fun to keep the angel candles up there. So what I did was make a little vignette, but it's very simple. There's not a lot of glitz. There's not a lot of glamor in there. Those are baskets that I picked up at Michael's this year. I picked up that bucket for 10 bucks at Primitive Goods. And I know it's in bad shape, but that's what I love about it. If you look closely, it doesn't even have a bottom. But you put all this together, I put a few twinkle lights, and it works in simplicity because it's just wood and earth tones. Now this piano is in no way primitive. It is obviously a modern electric piano and it's black and shiny. And the truth is, it doesn't fit anywhere in this house. But the other truth is that I play the piano. This is something that's very important to me, and I certainly am not gonna get rid of my piano, so it has to sit in my living room. So the way I decided to deal with it is to do nothing with it. It's just sitting there as a black statement. It doesn't even have a lamp on it because I didn't want to draw your eye over there with anything of interest. And so the truth is, it does really kind of get lost in the room. And you wanna look instead at the desk and not at the piano. And the black kind of works with the black and the tan theme in the room too. And while we're on the desk, I pulled this thing out of the barn. My friend Carrie always used her desk as an end table and I thought, well, why don't I too? And I love it because it brings such an antique, rustic look to the room and it's absolutely a wonderful side table because I have that chair there too to put things on like books and other things and I just really love it. So yes, I divided my room in half, I took out the rug and I just put the things I loved in and if you watch my things I love video you'll see it's the dobles and the lanterns and the lamps and all these great things and of course I mix the old with the new so that you have a very original look this is what you want you don't want to look just old like a museum and just new like the store if you mix the old and the new you get that great sense of home and comfort and coziness. And that's after all what decorating is all about. Gotta be able to let down your hair, be comfortable in your environment, love what you see, and not feel all stressed about what's going on around you. If it's in the house or if it's in your job 
or anything else in the world. Your home should be your retreat. And so make it that way.